Happy Hoarder here, and I'm so excited to be participating in Freckled Moms Room by Room, co-hosted by DIY Beauty on Purpose. Thank you, Devin and Leonette, for putting together this open collaboration so that we can all participate. This is something I recently pulled off of my back porch. And we kept it on all the time, so it was quite the little cobweb catcher. Because, you know, the, the bugs really loved it. I love it. I mean, it's just this cute little tarnished, rusty piece, and it's really sweet. But I think it's time for a change. So, my original intention was to spray paint it to give it a lot more color, make it, you know, a little brighter. And then I started cleaning it, and I noticed that it was copper or maybe brass. At this time, I really couldn't tell. It turned out, I'm pretty sure it's brass. So... I just had more fun sanding it down to see what came out. Having fun is not quite the right term. After hours of sanding, I finally came out with a pretty cool looking lampshade that was not what I expected. So I'm making some different choices on it now. So where I thought I would be spray painting it some light colors. No, I'm really liking the original dark tone and I definitely love how the stars turned out. Which is pretty much the theme of this video. It's all the things I thought I was going to do turned out to be something completely different. So I decided to spray paint the inside gold. I didn't quite have the right shade of gold because this is no shop September for me and I just had to deal with what I had but I was still happy with what happened. Yes, bugs always getting in the spray paint. What is that about? And while that was drying onto the lamp, so kind of the same thing was happening with the lamp. I was cleaning it up, getting all those cobwebs off and I noticed as I started to sand that I was getting the same effect that there was brass in the base as well. So I just went around and highlighted all the peaks and brought that little kiss of gold out. And I like that so much better. And then I started on the feet, which were solid brass. Everything that I could scrape off and make it look brassy, I brought out as much as I could. So where the lamp used to be on the other side of the sofa, away from the door, I decided it needed a little place of honor, so I put it by my back door. That's where everybody comes, by the way. This is why I started my room by room at the back door, because this is the first room most people see. Anyway, I think it came out really cute. I kept its original style, but then I did indeed brighten it up some. So I'm really enjoying this piece. Now we did have a little trouble getting it off of the neck of the lamp. That was brass, it was awfully soft. My husband even tried it and he said, yeah, I'm kind of worried about that. I, I am not leaving the light on all the time now, but by painting the inside gold, it really does cast a brighter light. It's amazing. Oh, I see I missed a bug. Those bugs, I don't have a good place to spray. I'm not even going to apologize for my fingernails because these are the hands of a hardworking artist. Yeah, that's what I actually found at Rolling Hills. And it's just one of these vintage little wire plant stands. But someone else had already primed it, so I'm halfway there. Well, back to scrubbing and sanding because it had some spider webs and things like that on it and it also had some rough spots. I don't know if it was primed as much as it was maybe painted just a flat gray, but either way I could paint over that. So I chose an oil rub bronze from my collection of spray paints and I think it worked out really well. This little table is just the perfect size. Yes, I had this one as well. These are just really cute to have, to put drinks on, whatever. So this one is one that had that plastic coating on it and someone had spray painted it and it is terrible. I just let it sit like this and used it this way with all the paint peeling off, but every time you touch it, this stuff peels off. I love the size of it, but it is such a mess. And more sanding, and my arm is killing me. I actually have fibromyalgia and arthritis, so this is gonna be a long, painful day, I can tell. I'm getting a little bit frustrated with this process because that stuff is just not coming off. And so I'm just about to let it go and say, honey, can you help me out, son? Because, you know, it's good to have a strong man in the family. But he had a better idea. He pressure washed it, and wow, that stuff just flew off. So I did a little bit more cleaning, hit a few rough spots, and then spray painted it this color called River Rock, I believe. One of my goals for No Shopping September was to use what I have, and this was the color I had. I picked this little cutie up at Rolling Hills. Now, it's a heavy, oh my goodness, heavy-duty crate. Now, I didn't get these little crates at, at the um, craft stores and all, but I didn't know they were this heavy. I think this one, it's a lot sturdier than most of the other little things I've seen. I don't mind it kind of as an undercoat if we, I do some distressing. And so, we'll pull up $3.75 price tags. 
pretty good deal, isn't it? I've actually amassed quite a collection of vintage crates that I love to use for storage and shelving and things like that. So this one, I wanted to make look old like the rest of those, but you just never quite get the same look, do you? But I did try. So I spray painted a brown and a green that I had, and then I came back and I scraped paint off. And then I decided, uh, it looks kind of, I don't know. So I decided to dry brush some white back on. Apparently, I hit time lapse instead of video, but it did turn out to be a key piece that I can use for display and for storage. So this chair has got really good legs. It's got oak legs and oak back. All this is oak, but this seating, I am pretty sure is what, and not oak. It's just an adorable little wood chair. It's very well made. It's very heavy duty. It's just been abused over the years. I bought it abused in a garage sale. You know me, I got thrift, but I really want to do something fun with this chair now. It's time. So after more sanding, and a little help from my husband bringing me stuff, and thank you, dear, I ended up sending it with a Minwax polyurethane product that you can use to just refinish something by just applying it over that. But you know what? This turned out to be a lot of work because it's very hard to get it on. Even my husband's bringing me things suggesting what I should do. And I don't know if it's because we probably had that forever, but it was very thick and it was probably too thick and it took a lot of cleaning. He's like bringing me denatured alcohol. He's bringing me other stuff to kind of thin it out. It's just been a little bit of a nightmare. And this went on. I want you to notice how the lighting is changing. Yes, it went from afternoon to evening as I worked on this. And I know you probably had similar projects, but darn it, I stuck with it because that's how I can be sometimes. I can be so incredibly tenacious over the weirdest stuff. Oh, and I just lost my lighting and my husband had to rig something up so I could see. And yeah, so this is what my day was like. It wasn't what I had planned, that's for sure. But I am pretty happy with the results. One thing I will say about this product, it went on really dark and it did get lighter. As you can see in the pictures, it's not really the, quite the same, which is a shame because I really like that color. And then the braces on my legs, well, they dried a different color altogether. But it was just a simple little farm chair, so it kind of fits his personality. As far as the red seat goes, well, that was a recommendation of one of my viewers. They thought I should paint the chair red. I compromised and just painted the seat. The red of my barn. That's the paint from my barn. And I did get a little help on this. My husband is much more handy with the sprayer than I am. And since we had that paint, he fixed it up for me. So let's talk about the accessories that I have added here. Now I have this witch that I bought in an estate sale. Now someone messaged me on another live stream whether or not I was going to use my witch this year. And I said, oh, no, probably kind of give her a break this year. But then I decided I'd put her out for this video enjoyer. Speaking of videos, I'm setting up for another video, but that's a whole nother story. So this witch I actually painted myself. This came in just a raw form like her broom. And I think these are made from palm tree leaves. I'm not sure, but anyway, she's kind of cute. That table came out to be just what I wanted it to be. So I was very happy about that. I'm on my crate, I have some other interesting things. I was a gourd artist for years, so I just had these tiny gourds. So I threw those on there. But this gourd I did paint back in 2005. I did some gourds for Halloween, and I actually taught a class on these, and they were so much fun. So everybody made a witch and a pumpkin and a ghost gourd. This is my little witch that I did, and my little ghosty holding his pumpkin. These are really easy to make. If you can get a gourd, have some fun with it. Look for all these weird shapes and see what you can do with it. Now this one, I did in 1992 and it's a little bit special. So I only had two of them, one I did for a friend and that one. And I just love how the owl just kind of came to me that that needed to be a pumpkin with an owl sitting on top. So those are a lot of fun. I encourage everybody. It's pretty easy to do. Just find a gourd and paint something on it. I usually paint Santa's on mine. Now, this little cat I got at a garage sale years and years and years and years ago, but it was white and I needed it to be black. So immediately spray painted it and sanded it down. I think I've had that cat for at least 22 to three years. Definitely a part of my Halloween decor every year. And it has a place for a candle inside, so I had to light it up. And it's so cute the way all the lights shine through the holes. I am really loving all these decor and DIY challenges because it's giving me an incentive to get some stuff done. That and no shop September because now they can't shop. I have all this time to do arts and crafts. 
So I'm really happy with my little setting. And I also have this little piece that goes with it. But this is such a funny story. It just needed its own video. I had such a time with this one little piece. But I hope you'll watch the video to see how it all came together. I want to thank Devin and Leonette again for putting together this little collaboration. I'm looking forward to watching all the participants' videos for their great ideas. And this is going to be fun because it's going to go month to month and room by room. And as the seasons change, I know we're going to get a lot of great ideas. So please check out the playlist below, like, and subscribe, and leave some comments because we always love to hear from you. And hey, hit that notification button because sometimes I make pretty good videos. Bye!